Hello, this is the video walkthrough for creating a clothespin in SolidWorks and ultimately 3D printing that clothespin. So this is the 3D file of my clothespin and you only need to do half because both sides of a clothespin are the same. And uh, what we're going to do is measure out a wooden clothespin and 3D print the wooden portion, throw away the wood and then use that spring for a plastic clothespin so we can make our own. So this is what it looks like. Um, a lot of clothespins are similar, but uh, use your own dimensions, get your own dimensions from a clothespin. Um, don't use mine because your clothespin might not be the same as mine. And I'm looking, there it is. Okay, and then this is the 2D print that we're going to be creating then after um, you draw the 3D part before we 3D print it. Alright, so. To get started on this, what we're going to do is you're going to take a clothespin you're going to have to take it apart. So what we're going to do is just going to pull this clothespin apart. Be careful that the spring doesn't fly out at you. And then take a look at your clothespins and make sure that they are both the same and that they're not damaged. If one of them seems out of whack or weird, don't use that one. So like this one right here is broken. So I'm not going to measure that one. I'm going to use this one because this one looks pretty good. And if they're both messed up, find a different clothespin. Alright, and then what we're going to do is we are going to draw out a front view and a right side view of the clothespin. And we'll make this right side what we would assume to be the right side of the clothespin, our front view. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this pen and I'm going to trace the clothespin. best to do this with some sort of thin writing utensil. I wouldn't recommend using a marker or a permanent marker. It would be too fat. These parts right down here, these are little finger grips. Just a part of the design. Not real necessary to the function. However, this arc, this arc, and this arc, and that rectangle are very important to the function. This is sort of a design, so that's not too important. And this angle here is sort of a design, so it's not real crazy important either. Um, but you do need to have somewhat of an angle there so that you can pinch the two clothes. All right, so then after you trace it, you'll have something that looks like this. And you can touch this up a little bit if you need to. Okay, and then I'm going to trace the front view. I'm going to give myself some space so I can write out all the dimensions that we're going to need. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a caliper then to measure all the parts of the clothespin. So if I want to get the total length, then I would just measure from one end to the other. And this measurement, if you're not real exact, doesn't matter too much. So that's reading 3.309. So three and 309 thousands. Thousands, yep. So um, what we would do then is we could start putting some of those dimensions into our drawing, like so. I'll space it out just a tad bit. This, since this is our overall dimension, I'll put that one kind of far away so I have room for our other dimensions. Try to keep it as nice, neat, and clean as possible. Make it easier to read later. So that was 3.309, and that 09 probably really doesn't matter. And you could probably almost round that down to 3.25, but we'll just leave it at 3.309. All right, and then uh, you have um, a bunch of other measurements to get. Um, something I want to note: this angle right here, we'll call that a 45 degree angle.
and it looks like that angle starts right at the center or the midpoint of that top line if you were to draw a rectangle so that's where we'll snap it to when we draw it um, this is a little bit more of a rectangle so I should probably try to fix that then these arcs here when you're measuring those you gotta think about how did they make this clothespin uh, well they obviously they cut it and then to get those holes they drilled it so they don't use non-standard size drill bits to drill holes in something as insignificant as a clothespin so when they drill these holes they use some sort of fractional um, drill bit so like uh, eighth inch three sixteenths quarter three eighths half inch something so when you measure these holes if you measure them with your caliper and you get an approximate size so for example let's just say that that the spacing of that hole measures about 0 0.254 well they didn't use a um, 0.254 size drill bit to drill that they used a 0.25 so a quarter inch drill bit to do that so it's the same thing here you can get an approximate measurement for this and it's coming in at 0 .0, I don't know, 9, 0 .09, I'm not quite sure what fractional measurement that would be, but it would be somewhere between a sixteenth of an inch and um, an eighth of an inch. So we could probably just say it's an eighth of an inch, so 0 .125, so on and so forth. So the diameter of this hole then diameter of this hole and the diameter of that hole so that would be like a quarter inch 0.125 and then that would probably end up being something I don't know like so it looks a little bit bigger maybe now this one's a quarter inch too so 0.25. So that's how you measure those diameter of those holes. And I would I would have to say that it looks like this drill bit is was drilled right at the center or right at the point where this angle begins. So when we draw that in SolidWorks, we'll just snap that circle to the point where that angle begins at. And this angle here is somewhere between Is somewhere between 7 and 10 degrees um, so I'm just gonna put 7 degrees call it 7 degrees okay when you're all done you should have all of these measurements laid out so all the question marks would have a number there instead okay and uh, you can see here I put 10 degrees, but on the one I just did, I, I put 7. And uh, you're going to want to make sure you lay out your numbers like mine, or I suppose you could even make them better if you put like the diameter dimension. If we were to put that one right here, and that diameter dimension here, that diameter dimension here. But all your measurements should be exactly like mine, so the center of this hole would be measured from here to there and since you can't figure out exactly where the center of that is you can just sort of approximate and that's fine it doesn't have to be exactly right but as close as you can you'll need to get all those measurements okay and then once you have all those measurements then you're ready to start drawing this in SolidWorks so that's where we'll go next so in SolidWorks you'll open up a new part drawing and uh, We'll get started by um, creating a rectangle and extruding that. So extrude boss base, front plane. I'm going to grab a corner rectangle. It doesn't really matter if you grab a corner or a center. Either one will work. Uh, remember, you need to be in ANSI and inches, pounds, and seconds. So my measurements are not necessarily going to match your measurements, so use your measurements because the clothespin I'm using is probably bigger than yours. And this size here is going to be um, 3.25. Okay, fully defined, purple arrow, 
and then I'm going to extrude it 0.4. Okay, and then I'm going to move to my front plane, and I'm going to do an extrude cut on this surface, and let's do our angles first. So it looks like that 45 degree angle starts right at that midpoint. Whoops, zoom in on that, made a mistake. Move that up there. There we go. Okay. And set this to 45 degrees. And remember how you lay out your smart dimensions in your 3D part drawing is exactly how they'll get imported later into your 2D drawing. So if you lay them out in the right spot where you want them while you're creating your 3D part, then you won't have to worry about moving them later when you um, when you go to create your 2D part. Smart dimension, so this should be 7. And so from the top to there, that should be 1.7 on mine. I don't know what your measurements are supposed to be. Okay, and then I'm just going to extrude cut that, and now we got rid of those angles. The next thing we'll do is we will extrude cut out those arcs. So I'm just going to go to extrude cut, select the front surface, circle. I'm going to draw three circles on the edge. Make sure you don't snap to any reference geometry that you don't mean to, such as a, a midpoint right there. Don't snap to that. And then we can put in our dimensions, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, eighth inch, whoops, eighth inch. And this one, 0.25. Cool thing about SOLIDWORKS is you can actually put in fractions and it will do the math for you. Okay, and now I'm going to smart dimension from the center of these arcs to the top. Make sure that your dimensions are horizontal and that you didn't accidentally um, turn them to an angle. So this is 0.5. This dimension is, see how you can accidentally bring it off at an angle. You don't want that. They need to be like that. 0.85. Oops, there we go. And 1.7. So that one actually should be right down here. We'll just delete that smart dimension and just snap that one to that corner. Because that's where it should be. Okay, and then extrude cut. Green check mark. Alright, there's those. Now the next thing we have to do is put in the little notch in the back. So I'm going to do extrude cut. Select that front surface. Do a center rectangle tool. Or we could do a corner rectangle tool. Either one would work. Actually, corner rectangle would probably work a little bit better. Um, but we're good. We'll roll with it. Okay, so um, the height of this hole is an eighth of an inch. And the distance between back of that hole and the uh, back of the hole in this surface is, a, is about a sixteenth of an inch. But if we dimension from one side of that rectangle to the uh, circle center, bleh, square, be 0.125. And these aren't displaying right so we can change that over here so we can see those better. And then the height, or the, uh, the location vertically, is 0.92 from the top. And this is a very, very critical uh, dimension that you have this one as close as possible, or uh, close as accurate as you can as long, along with this one here, because the spring will go in here and in here, so that distance has got to be pretty much as perfect as you can get. And we're just going to extrude cut that through. Okay, and then now what we're going to do is we're going to put in our um, 
initials. Now if you look at this and you notice that your arc is really, really close to this, let's say any closer than an um, eighth of an inch, then, then what you're probably going to need to do is make this arc smaller since that arc's not critical to the functionality of the closed pin. Um, you could actually completely get rid of it if it's too close to your notch over here. Okay, so uh, let's put my name on it, or my initials. I'm going to go to Features, Extrude Boss Base, select the surface. Uh, I'm going to draw a center line so that it doesn't show up later. I'll use a center line or a construction line, and then on that construction line I will write BG. For this right here, uh, that line, if you already had it selected, when you hit the text tool, it'll appear here. If there's nothing here, then just click on that line. Okay, so you want it first and last initial. You want it caps. You want it bold. Uncheck document font. Go to font. Points. Make it 18. If 18 is too big, then make it 16. And you'll see it's on the wrong side, so I'm going to hit this button to flip it over. And then I'm going to hit this button to reverse it and then you can adjust the location of those letters with this or you can drag it to the right spot by changing the length of that construction line. Yeah. That looks that looks pretty good right there. All right. Um, now it's important that you don't put your initials here because that's where the spring is going to go. So if you have your initials here, then it's going to get in the way of the spring. So it's important to have your initials down there. All right, then uh, I'm going to hit the purple arrow, and I'm just going to extrude, boss my na my initials one thirty second of an inch. So it's not very far out, and that is how you make the clothespin. You want to add a material to it then you can go right click on material and you can change it to woods and it's probably made out of pine so apply close and you're curious how much this weighs mass properties mass <laughs> zero point zero zero pounds so yeah apparently it doesn't weigh enough to uh, to register um, let's increase those decimal places it weighs point zero zero two nine pounds so yeah light as the feather. Okay, um, then to create the 2D part drawing you're going to go file, uh, make drawing from part, it's going to tell you that you have to save this close pin so what we want to do is we want to name it close pin all caps and that way it'll import into your title block correctly you're going to browse for your sheet format I'm going to make sure that this is the right one. I'll bring up my preview. Oh, I can't preview that one. All right. I think this is the right one. I got I got a couple. Yeah, this is the right one. Okay, and then I'm going to drag in my clothespin. And since I had it open up in the background, I click make drawing from part. It popped up there automatically. But if it doesn't pop up there for you like that, you can either go over here and you can browse for it and then pull it in or you can bring it in with the uh, model view but this I like it this way because then you can see what you uh, what you have in there if for some reason you drew yours sideways you can click on the view and you can click up here at the rotate and you can rotate your drawing so that yours rotates um, and it's upright like mine alright then uh, annotations model items entire model and I'm going to select just the front view to get all those dimensions because I want the majority of all the dimensions on my front view and then I'll click my right side view model items entire model and then anything that didn't get imported into my front view then gets imported into um, my right view so okay I'm just going to drag these out so that I can see them Push these out a little bit more
these arcs should technically be displayed as a radius. But we'll just leave them as a diameter. Okay, now uh, let's fix some of these decimal places. Some of them have too many decimal places showing, and that's something we'll, uh, we want to fix. So, for example, this 3 here, it's 130 seconds, so we'll need 5 decimal places. We don't need all these 40s, so we can delete 2 of those. We only need 1. This 45 and this 7 should only have um, shouldn't have any decimals there go. Um, then uh, 0 0.125, 0 0.125, quarter inch that's good, that's good, that's good. This one here should have three decimals alright, other than that those look pretty good um, Alright, so then the next thing we're going to do is uh, note, and we are going to use a leader line for that note, and we're going to put that note here, and we're going to type all in caps initials are 18 point font or whatever size you ended up using if you had to use something smaller then put in the smaller size um, but don't make it any smaller than 16 point bold and extruded 132nd of an inch okay escape escape and I want that leader line on the other side if I can manage that. I'm going to turn it off. Keeps bringing it back to the same one. Bummer. I had it switching around the other day. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I got to do to get that to switch around. Um, just leave it like this we'll move it over that side so it doesn't cross over our part okay and then uh, check the title block everything looks good here okay and uh, for the note we'll put in another note for uh, the material and the material is going to be 3d printed PLA Alright, so that's that. So then we'll just go ahead and save that and save all. It's going to save all my other documents. 
that I have open right now and that is how you create your clothespin in SolidWorks and then it will be to the 3D printer.